if you've been driving your Miata and almost got ran off the road because your horn either wasn't too loud or you just weren't seen, well then this is the video of how to install a new horn. So here I have the Thompson Automotive um, horn kit. It's actually an electrical air horn kit where it has the air compressor connected to the actual um, unit itself. You don't have to worry about um, wiring or tubing uh, coming loose. So this should, I guess, give you the satisfaction of having a loud air horn while not having to worry about that kind of wiring. But with Thompson Automotive, he gives you the install. Uh, instructions along with the wiring and bracket and fuse. Let me get that down. And then the air horn itself, which is a tornado by Marco Automotive. They do emphasize a lot that they're um, made in Italy, but I don't care. It's just an air horn. So, and on top of that, from Tom, he gave me two candies, which is great. Um, so the thing about this Tornado Mako or Marco Automotive, you can probably buy this itself for about $54. But what Thompson, I believe his name is actually Tom Thompson, um, he basically sourced these wiring brackets and the fuse so you don't have to do that. Um, I believe the fuse, you have to switch it to a 20 amp instead of a 15 so um, it doesn't blow. But we'll, uh, yeah, start with the install. So this is what the horn sounds like right now. It's not the OEM one. It's decent, but when you're actually driving, it's not that loud. It's not loud enough. There's been plenty of times where people either don't see me or I don't know, just aren't paying attention. When I honk my horn, they don't even realize. So I have to either slam my brakes or go into a different lane. So hopefully this will solve that. So first you want to at least take safety precautions, which would be to remove or disconnect the battery. Um, I have mine latched on. Let me check which millimeter that is. I want to say it's a 10 millimeter, like everything else in this car. But I can be wrong. And I'm not. It is a 10 millimeter. Just get this side disconnected. And that should be enough to safely work on your car. engine bay is pretty dirty but I think all we'll need to do first is take off this plastic cover because we're gonna need to get access into that spot so it looks like it's four screws a good rule of thumb is to have a container that you can put things in that uh, could drop you don't want to place it on somewhere here where it could get lost in the engine bay so These are plastic screws, so be careful, they could break. All of this plastic on the Miata is very old. Looks like this one actually is threaded out. It's not even screwing out, so. Looks like this one might be the case too, but I'm not sure. And pieces should just click out. And this is the piece that is where the screw is. Make sure you don't lose those. They just kind of pop in and out. All right. So there's that plastic piece out. Some people don't even have those. But if you look in here, this is the horn that was there previously. Um, it is not an OEM horn. I did change it back in the day when I first got this, but 
it was just one from AutoZone and it just wasn't loud enough. So what we have to do is take that out and disconnect it and then swap it in with the other one. So we'll do that. So there is an electric attachment, basically the plug-in from the car and I'm trying to locate which one that is specifically. It looks like it's the green wire here. And it's just a push in and then pull. Make sure you don't rip out the wire. But I need to figure out. Problem with these uh, old components is the plastic is so old that it probably will break. But I got it, so got that disconnected. And now we can just remove that. I'm gonna guess that's probably a 10 millimeter as well, so we'll try that out. It is. And this will get the actual horn assembly out itself. Um, Want to make sure to keep all of this. Make sure you don't lose it or drop it. Okay. So this is the old one. Um, I thought it would be good, but. We'll see. Supposedly the new air horn's about 140 decibels, so that's pretty loud. So it should get the attention of everyone. Not that I'm trying to every time, but it should keep you safer than this one. Uh, I'm not sure what this one was from AutoZone, but it is just a generic one. So I just opened the box for the first time. Um, yeah, it has the air compressor unit on itself. Um, it has a fuse right here but I'll have to take a look and see if we actually use this one or if it's separate um, from my understanding we use this fuse here but it also comes with the bolt and then yeah you can see where the two uh, different horn sounds will come out of so here we have the washer and the bolt and then the plate uh, with the orientation for the NAs, it's different for the NBs, but in the instructions, they're pretty clear. Um, you get this plate. This top one's a little bit bigger than the bottom one. You wanna have the top one sitting right here. And what you're gonna do is this bolt fits right in here inside of that where it won't rotate. It's just the right size. So you're gonna have that flush with the uh, plate. So I'll do that. Before you screw that in, you want to connect into the negative terminal, which is indicated here. In the images, it shows the green one being the negative, so we're going to use that. We're going to follow suit. Just lock in just like that. And then you're going to want to put that so that it has a grounding spot when you actually mount it to the body. And you just slide this underneath so that the bolt can fit on. Okay, so with the instructions, I think they're using an NA6. I have a NA8 and the uh, cooling lines run on the inside bumper, but with mine, it doesn't. So that was a confusing part. So I'm gonna use my GoPro to kind of give you an angle of where it should go and where they spotted it. So if you look in here, it says it's the right of the latch on the driver's side. Um, I think the cooling line would come about right here. It would come across this frame. But the 10 millimeter bolt that I used to take off the horn right here screws right in perfectly with this same spot. So I think it is this exact spot that they used for the uh, cooling lines, but they must have changed it for the uh, later model NAs. So I'm gonna attach it right here, and then we're gonna hook in this core into the bottom, the positive side. Um, 
you may have to just take off these latches um, to make it stretch but they also give you an extension for that but you should be okay to not have to use that but I know for NBs you might have to. You'll need a 10 millimeter. Try not to lose anything or drop anything. We're gonna try our best to get this on. It's going in, so that's good. That was the hardest part. Oh boy. Um, yeah, that was actually harder than I thought, but we got it. Now we just need to collect, connect the lines. Um, in here we'll, we'll pop plastic uh, pieces. Okay, so it took a lot of work. Uh, those are one of those push-ins that you just kind of gotta, you know, somehow force out. So, um, in theory, should just plug in. So let me get underneath and I'll plug that in and I'll kind of show you where that is. So now that I have it attached, um, here's the bottom of the uh, horn after I've got it mounted in. Sorry for the light, but it should just plug straight into the positive right here. As long as this doesn't fall off. So you get that attached on and in theory, that should be it. Now that we have it connected, we need to replace the 15 amp fuse for the brake lights and the horn with the 20 amp. So the fuse panel on the NA is located under the driver's side in the footwell, and I'll go in there and I'll show you where that is. So I took a look after crawling underneath there, I'm supposed to replace the 15 amp with the 20. For some reason, I already have a 20, so maybe that's the case for our NA8s. So I crawled in there for no reason, but now I'm just gonna test it out. I'm gonna connect the battery back and we're gonna see if it works. There it is. It's uh, That's definitely an air horn. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be like that, but it works. I sh it, it should get attention. That's pretty loud. So. Hopefully you don't have as much troubles as I did. Maybe I uh, busted my knuckles a little bit. It's not the easiest thing, but it's also not the hardest thing. If you like working on your cars with a good you know, outcome at the end, this would be a great modification to add to your car and also for safety. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed what I did. And if you like it, subscribe if you want to. I don't care. And like. I'll see you around.